That's a tough one. Can, can they come in? Sure, they can. But they can still try out after. Well, they they sh but they need to try out now. Well, that's and what I mean. I, I'm, we're getting a lot of last minute. What about September? When someone comes in and they are qualified to play. And, uh, if if we've uh, if we've selected a club, and uh, you know for some reason uh, somebody leaves a uh, month in, or perhaps uh, moves away, or w whatever. Uh, you know, we may uh, we may add that extra player at that time, or perhaps the coach uh, had a shortened bench. Perhaps the coach selected, you know, especially at novice age, you could almost get away with twelve skaters at novice age, right? I mean, they're one-hour games, yada yada yada. So, you know, rather than signing say fifteen players, that coach may have signed twelve or thirteen or fourteen, and kept some room for an extra player over the course of the. Are you going to allow that? Oh. Is that part of the? Uh, it's not. It's not something that we've actually etched in stone. So then, a coach would be smart not to fill all his cards out well, at this point. Like hypothetically, hypothetically, if we make, if we now we've got that double A pool, we're gonna have that A pool. What if kids fall into that B and we say it's too much of a jump there? So we're gonna scale back on a number of players per team. So, if, but if somebody comes to the forefront, I think that player will. If, if that player is a truly of an A or double A caliber, we give them an opportunity to, to whether, they, whether they come from your system or from exactly. Yeah. That's what I, I, if they can get a yeah. if they can get a release from the housing program, should they be uh, registered there? I'm sure that uh, that uh, the uh, the board would not uh, would not prevent a player from from developing. Uh, should you know somebody that's just moved into the area, for example, somebody not know about Nickel City Hockey, for example, because that could happen. But everybody knows that, you know, what the new associations all know. And people who have uh, been going through the process here, are, are they going through some reminder at the same time? Some reminder, uh, their tryouts are until later. Uh, their triple A's will only start next week. Our triple A's will be done by then. Will your players be able to skate on the ice uh, with their tryouts? Yes. Even if they've made a team, if uh, only if they've been released. So in other words, uh, I've released a number of players uh, at various levels that have tried out for our AAA clubs, and have not made those teams. They can actually come to our tryouts. And a lot of people don't know this. They can actually come to our tryouts because they're registered in Eagle City Hockey. Therefore, they are covered under uh, in which eight. Uh, so they can find out which team they can make here, and they can try out in summary. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Can they try for both? Sure. And then pick whichever team they want. Sure. Okay. So ideally, it's both of you should be icing at the same time. And then, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there could be some movement. There could be. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, if, if a coach does his job here and puts together a, a program, a good program, to entice the, these players uh, in the state playing in the city. Uh, they may just opt to stay in, in, in the district, maybe for travel purposes, maybe luckily with their friends. Who knows, right? So you like, may have some players that are going to play in Sudbury trying out or coming to be evaluated right now. Yes. Yeah. And if you and that's fine. And if you pick them now for your double A team, right? They could be going back home anyway. Right, and and you know again they need to be registered with Nickel City Hockey, so they would if they came for Sudbury they need need to be released. First of all, and register with Nickel City. So they have to release. They have to get released in summary to try out for <laughs> yes. and, and register for Nickel yes. City to which, try out. Which won't and happen. Then they're going to have to get a release. Of right. Them. Okay. Which won't happen it because was, uh, it's just too. Uh, it, it, yeah, they haven't started their tryouts yet. So why would they release any of their players uh, to try out here? But the opposite does happen. Like I said, I've released quite a few players that haven't made our our minor, right. so our Pee Wees or our Madam clubs. And uh, they have the option. So you're going to give them a chance to play at the highest level they can? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's good. So at least you're getting first shot at it. Yes. So yeah, if like you so. have a strong program, a real strong program. Well, you know, who knows, like Sudbury will also have some elite players also. Mm -hmm. And uh, at any given level, they, they, they could be stronger than, than our clubs. The fact that we're icing or, or you know, having these tryouts early is, you know, uh, really, uh, Coincidental because we needed to do our tryouts early this year because their evaluations first and their tryouts second. We need we needed to have you know a three week window there where we could select our kids based on 
talent. So, so will you accept tryouts from Sudbury players who have not made their AAA teams? Even though your teams have already Well, hopefully year. hopefully they haven't fully signed. But I, I would say at this point, they, if they don't make that Sudbury AAA team, they will have to play double A. They won't, there won't be a room for them on Nichols no. City? No, not, not to my knowledge. Okay. At right now. Because you'd data because your teams would have to cut a player to right. bring another one in. And, you know, Sudbury, uh, Sudbury Dogwood, they also had tryouts, the AAA tryouts in the spring. They did see their, their oh, players okay. for a uh, period of time there. Uh, our guys uh, chose to do spring skates and whatnot. Now, having said that, uh, and it's new for this year, Hockey Canada said that you could actually have your tryouts one week uh, after the Ontario's. So our, that's why we were, we were able to have our AAA tryouts in the spring for the first time ever. This is something new. Do you like that? Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. And in the spring, we were, we were gonna have tryouts for our AAAs. We'll have our evaluations for our AA's and A's in the spring. So AAA's will be done one week. Following two weeks, we'll have our evaluations and tryouts for AA's and A's. The coaches can select their teams. They're done for the summer. They don't uh, leave any open? They'll leave a few open. It's just like you do. As you know, Southern Ontario, they've been doing this for years. Yeah. It's been their practice for as long as I can remember. Now, it leaves it open for a club if they want to do a, uh, you know, a golf tournament fundraiser, or barbecues, right. or ball okay. tournaments. Or they've got the players. They've they got the players. They've got the time. They want to do some the auctions. They can do it with them. They've got a whole month. And the summertime, uh, you know, offers uh, obviously a, a different perspective as far as fundraising, because you can't obviously you, you can host, like I said, a golf tournament, you can have a baseball tournament, you can do, you can have barbecues. You know, there are other options there other than you know having to, you know, having to do uh, various fundraisers throughout the winter because of the uh, weather conditions. So yeah, that's good. Your board of directors, I guess, uh, a lot of experience? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, what's nice about our board, there are a lot of, uh, most of us have no ties. We don't have any kids playing hockey anymore. Okay. So, you know, I but think about the presidents. Your coaches too, is that a requirement? Or? That's not a requirement. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, there aren't that many people kicking down the doors to, to coach. It's really hard to find volunteers. Uh, but we do have quite a few coaches that don't have any kids uh, playing any longer. They just volunteer the time because they love doing it. I've only done it once when I haven't had a child on the team. And, and, and it is different. You have a different uh, uh, style when you try to, I mean, you're, you're Sometimes your, your child gets the worst end of the stick when they're on your team. But you're, you're going overboard not to uh, look like you're playing favorites. And your child is disadvantaged. I always remember when I was a kid refereeing, and I had a younger brother playing hockey, he used to beg me not to referee his games because I let the other players do anything they wanted to. And I never <laughs> called a penalty against them. And, and it was like you went overboard. but. Um, have you done uh, both? Or? Yes, I've uh, I've uh, coached I coached uh, my youngest, and uh, <clears throat> and I and I agree with that. That's very true. You uh, you know he was one of the stronger players on the team, and I was you know you tend to be. Do you give him a C or? Right, exactly. Or you know uh, you didn't do that drill right. Uh, you need to you know sometimes you you use them to set. Use our, we use our kids to, to set an example. And I, re, I recall one time we were in a tournament, and we were in a tournament in Walton. And we were beating the team by about 10 goals. We were only halfway through the game. Uh, so what I did is I, uh, I, I, I took our top players. My son happened to be one of them. I said, let's uh, double shift the other kids. Because I felt our kids, myself, and my assistant coaches and, and manager, our boys were always on the ice, crucial situations. You know, they were there for power plays, penalty kills. They were the top players on the team. And so took the opportunity, whatever I could, to double shift the guys that had, and gals that had less ice time 
in those situations. So you're right. You, uh, you know, and I, you know, sometimes you, there are some repercussions for that, but <laughs> you deal with it when you get home. Sort of like yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> From the, the, the player's parents. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a long car ride. Only. Yeah, it's a very long car ride. Um, we missed anything that you wanted to cover with uh, Nickel City? Uh, no, I think uh, I think that gives uh, people a pretty good. You know, perspective and yeah. bird's eye view. Uh, and your website, association. your website's definitely there. You know, like, what do you think of the website? That's, it looks complete. Good. Um, contacts. It's easy to contact people. Yes. You're open to questions. Right. You know, it's uh, you know, it's a work in progress. I think uh, with wine, I think it will be yeah. better. In time, and, uh, so you're going to get to see it. Are you going to be at a lot of the evaluations yourself? Yes. So you're going to get to talk to a lot of people. Yeah, and what we plan on doing is, is having some information sessions there. You know, for example, now we'll have the novice group there for the first three sessions today. I plan on talking to all of them and, and kind of getting their perspective on some, you know, certain certain aspects. And one of the things I want to talk to them about is, is to possibly look at icing one double eight novice team instead of two and see what their thoughts uh, are on, 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 on that. Because ultimately I mean it's the parents, right, that are that, that are you know, that are they're our customers, if I can call them that. And they have we have to have happy customers. And we want to make sure that if we go this route, it's we're not dictating to anybody. We want it to be the democracy. We want to make sure the parents are supportive and we're going to explain to them why, and just so that you know, we we want the strongest teams possible at, at every at every category, at every level, <coughs> and if we feel that we can be very competitive if we ice one novice team instead of two, one Adam team rather than two, uh, the, the problem you have with that is uh, who they play against. Right. And what I mean by that is, rather you know, if you take. Novice, for example, if you if you split spread the talent pool amongst the teams, two bells, novice teams, we should be pretty competitive with Coppercliff and Sudbury and, and other teams in or out of the area. Now, you ice one team, and now you have this fear that you may be lacking competition, you may not be challenged, and uh, so that's the struggle we have. Nickel, we had discussions with Joe McCombe, the president of Nickel District, and they're open to the idea of moving our novice uh, uh, team. If we do go with the select team, and I can't call them select, but one double A novice team, and they would play against Adam H players in a non body contact format, of course, because there's no body contact. The trouble with Adams, if you move them up to Pee Wee, they play in a Division II Pee Wees against A Pee Wee clubs. The problem there is that a lot of people feel it takes away from the game. There's, uh, you know, they, they have to play an Adam H team, you can't play body contact. Now you got to play with a non body contact. Format. So, anyway, so yeah, that's those are the discussions we have with the growing pains this year. Correct. Yeah. It sounds like it's, it's it sounds like it's organized well enough to to be given a good shot. I think so, and, and I think we have one shot at it. I think maybe not, but that's how we see it. So we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that we've covered all our bases and dotted our eyes and crossed our T's, and hopefully, uh, I think we will. It will get the support of everybody, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it will be uh, a force to be reckoned with for, for time to come. I, yeah, I hope. I'm sure it will. All right. So, Gus, let's go. Uh, you're <coughs> president of the Nickel City Hockey Association. And yes. I'm, I'm sure, like I say, during the season, it'd be nice to have a couple more sessions where we might get a few people in so we can kind of debrief as we're going along and, uh, and get some discussions as some of the philosophies, but, but hopefully this entire show uh, has explained most of what is needed about the Michael City Hockey Association. I'd love to have an opportunity to have, uh, you know, Mr. Ken Creasy, President, yeah. Howard Wolf and Dennis Michel, Summary. Yeah. You know, the three of us yeah. sit in and uh, have some discussions. Yeah. Uh, Joe McCullman from Nickel District, yeah. you know. And, uh, and we can do that as a, a four-person discussion even on video and then play it over the years so that sure. people, more people can see it. Yeah, no, we'll definitely do that. Thanks, Gus, for taking the time. Thank you for having me. And I want to thank our listeners for uh, tuning
tuning in to The Learning Clinic on CKOE 96.7 FM. Uh, just reminding you that we're here every Monday at 1 o'clock, and I will uh, return momentarily.